to happen now is people to uh, people all over the country to directly confront their members of Congress. Uh, we're talking to Russell McIver and Dr. Margaret Flowers. We're going to come back to them. I want to ask Dr. Flowers about these polls that Russell cites uh, indicating people's support for single payer. Um, and then we're going to be joined by Howard Zinn, the legendary historian here in our studio in New York. Um, a new film is being made that will be aired on History, the new History Channel, called The People Speak. And among those who are in this are, oh, Eddie Vedder. That's he'll be our break. You've thrown the word and your death will come soon. Yeah, that's Eddie Vedder singing Masters of War by Bob Dylan. In a few minutes, we'll find out why and what this film, Let the People Speak, is all about. But right now, we're joined um, by Russell McIver in Washington, founder of singlepayeraction.org. He's editor of The Corporate Crime Reporter. And Dr. Margaret Flowers in Baltimore, a pediatrician there, who is co-chair of the Maryland Chapter of Physicians for a National Health Program. Dr. Flowers, the issue of these polls, um, who supports single payer in this country, and then explain exactly what it is, since it's so rarely talked about in the media, except as a reference to be criticized. Right. Thank you. Um, so we have numerous independent polls done by groups like CBS, New York Times, and Yahoo that have consistently shown that 60 percent or more of the American people favor a national health program based on single payer. And recently, there was a poll taken where they used the term socialism. Would, you, would the country be better off if we had socialized medicine, which is you know, the, the worst word we're supposed to use? And 46% of the public said, yes, we would be better with socialized medicine. 39% said they didn't think we would be better. But clearly, 60% or more of the American public favors this type of system. And then if we look at the doctor polls, we have a physician poll from two years ago where they used the American Medical Association database. Now, the AMA tends to be a fairly conservative group of physicians. They represent less than 30% of physicians nationwide, but they tend to be the more conservative. And out of that group, 59% favored a national health program. And if you looked at the primary care specialties like pediatrics, it was much higher in the 70s and 80s. So there's clearly support from the public and from physicians for single payer health care. It's just Congress who's having a hard time coming around. And the reason we support it is that single payer health care would create a national health system. We don't have a system right now. Everything is very fragmented and very confusing. It would create a single system where every person is included and it covers all medically necessary care. It frees doctors and patients to make medical decisions without interference from the insurance companies, insurance companies who are only trying to profit off of this situation and are, and are making it very, very difficult to, to provide quality care in this country. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to ask about President Obama uh, Monday uh, standing with the, well, all of the health industry uh, leaders uh, saying that, um, uh, that, you know, they were going to be voluntarily shaving some $2 trillion off U.S. health care costs over the next 10 years. Among those gathered were executives from HMO Giants, uh, Kaiser Foundation Health Plan and Health Net Inc., and the health insurance lobbying group, America's Health Insurance Plans, from American Health Hospital Association, American Medical Association, from medical device companies, and from the pharmaceutical industry, including the president and CEO of Merck, and former Congressman Billy Towson, now president and CEO of Pharma, the uh, massive industry lobbying group. Russell McIver, uh, your take on this meeting. Well, Amy, you had uh, Dr. Quentin Young on your program in March. He's the founder of Physicians for a National Health Program and a friend of President Obama when he was in Chicago as a young politician and when he supported single payer. And Quentin Young called President Obama dishonest, and he is dishonest because, and the corporate Democrats are dishonest because they know that single payer is the only way that's going to solve this problem. And yet, they're keeping it off the table. And yet, they're cavorting with the health insurance industry, which should be put out of business. Uh, so this is the problem. The problem is not a question of everybody in this town knows what the answer is and knows this is going to be the answer. The problem is they don't want to confront it. They, want to, they don't want to confront it because of the, the political power. 
And so we're going to force them to confront it. The enemy is no longer the health insurance industry or the pharmaceutical industry. The enemy is the corporate Democrats, the liberals and the corporate liberals in Congress who say they support uh, 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 health care for all, but are opposed to the only thing that will get us there. So that's why we're doing these actions, because we're conf directly confronting the corporate liberals, Max Baucus, President Obama, Senator Chris Dodd, and we're going to be doing this all over the country, and saying to them, it's time now that you put aside your ties to the corporate industries, to the pharmaceutical industry, and that you do the right thing for the American people. What are and those ties? Well, for example, Senator Baucus, over his career, has taken hundreds of thousands of dollars from the pharmaceutical industry and from the, and from the drug industry. And so, it, from, from my point of view, when Senator Baucus says single payer is off the ta table, he's speaking on behalf of the industries. He's not speaking as a representative of the people. Same for President Obama. I mean, President Obama, why not have uh, a, an advocate, a doctor advocate at the White House speaking for single payer? When he held his first uh, summit at single payer action, we wrote about the fact that he was excluding the single payer advocates. There was a protest scheduled, and he threw the single payer advocates a bone by having uh, Congressman Conyers there and someone from PNHP there, and the, and the protest was called off. We will not call off the protests. We will continue to engage in creative civil disobedience until this is delivered, sooner rather than later. And if the hearings are closed, Russell? Well, they're going to close the hearings to, to mark up the, uh, the, the legislation. But it's not just going to be in Congress. We're going to be doing this all over the country. We're going to be doing it in congressional districts, and we are doing it in uh, congressional districts. The, f the, re the regular means of communications have been shut down. Congress is not listening. Uh, Congress is only listening now to the, to, to, to the big industries, to the pharmaceutical and healthcare industries. And so we have no choice now. When we stood up, and, and uh, this is going to take doctors and nurses, and that's why this is, this is a winnable issue now, because doctors and nurses are so frustrated that they're ch starting to see that this is the only way to do it. One of the doctors that we were arrested with last week, Dr. Carol Paris, is a psychiatrist uh, in Maryland. And while we were sitting there in jail, she was telling me, uh, that one of her specialties is disturbed doctors. These are doctors who are so frustrated with the system that they're taking it out on their patients. So she sees a way to relieve the pressure on doctors as single payer so that doctors can once again focus on their patients. Uh, right now, they're being distracted by insurance. I have a doctor friend in Maryland right now who's setting up his own business, and it's a total nightmare. He's got to deal with all these insurance companies and the bills and setting up the system. No time to focus on the patients. Dr. So Margaret Flowers, be... the number one issue um, uh, that is often raised in the media is people like choice and people who have health care plans that they like, they want to keep them and be guaranteed of that. What do you think of the public plan next to keeping private plans, something that it sounds like President Obama is supporting. Right. Well, I agree that Americans want choice, but I think Congress is confused about what kind of choice Americans want. What they really want is a choice of health care provider, the choice of where they can go to seek their health care, and the choice of their treatment. Because health insurance doesn't provide health care. It doesn't cover health care at the time when you're the sickest is when you run into the difficulties in trying to work with the health insurance. And the, the problem with the public-private option and the public plan um, that there's offering is that it, it keeps so many of the problems that we currently have. It keeps this next to the public option, yes, but you still have all of these thousands or over 1,500 private insurances that you still have to deal with. And so in terms of savings, we're not going to see the savings that we need to see if we have a public-private option. We only save about one-seventh of the money that we could save with a single-payer system. And we know with all the money we can save going to single-payer, we can provide more health care. We need to change the conversation and stop talking about health insurance and start talking about creating a system that provides health care. Finally, Russell McIver, this latest news today of Social Security and Medicare um, uh, being threatened, uh, going bankrupt, not being solvent. We have just 30 seconds to go. Well, it's interesting that, you know, the, the, the health insurance companies got passed uh, so-called Medicare Advantage, where we, the taxpayers, pay the, pay the health insurance companies to undermine Medicare. 
Medicare is single payer. You know, one of the one of the propaganda pieces of the health insurance industry and Max Baucus and President Obama is they want a uniquely American solution to health care, by which they mean not single payer because it's so-called socialist. But it's interesting that uh, the New Republic ran an interview with the guy who created the Taiwanese single payer system. They looked all over the world and they modeled their single payer system on our Medicare, a uniquely American solution. So this is what we need. We need single payer, Medicare for everyone, single payer, and we're going to get it done with creative civil disobedience. Go to singlepayeraction.org, sign up and donate, and we'll get it done with a million active Americans. Russell McIver, founder of singlepayeraction.org, also editor of The Corporate Crime Reporter, and Dr. Margaret Flowers, speaking to us from Baltimore, Maryland, a pediatrician and co-chair of the Maryland Chapter of the Physicians for National Health Program.